on an offshore oil drilling platform. The workers, who had been busy for half a year, were preparing to reunite with their families aboard a helicopter. But just as the captain was counting the number of people, a violent explosion occurred on the drilling platform not far ahead. The powerful shockwave instantly tore open a huge gap in the sea's surface. The captain, sensing danger, immediately instructed everyone to board the helicopter quickly. They had to evacuate urgently. Just as the helicopter was taking off from the drilling platform, the massive platform plummeted straight into the seabed. And those workers who didn't make it onto the helicopter in time, were not as fortunate. The massive trench created by the shockwave instantly swallowed the 100-meter-tall vessel. In an instant, the vessel vanished from the sea surface. Meanwhile, inside the drilling platform, worker Chris was conducting pressure testing. But in the moment he looked up, countless seawater rushed into the pipes, directly crashing down on Chris. In the end, only a small portion of the hundreds of workers on the drilling platform survived. The company notified the families of the employees about the casualties. The foolish executives thought they could resolve everything through compensation, but they encountered an obstacle they hadn't anticipated. Lucy, a maritime rescuer, had to review all the footage from the drilling platform. After obtaining permission from the executives, they brought Lucy to the company's control room. The footage being played showed her husband, Chris, working just before his death, accompanied by a massive influx of seawater into the pipes. The footage abruptly cut off, seeing her husband die before her eyes. Lucy couldn't accept this reality for a moment, but as she burst into tears, the staff member at the computer discovered a glimmer of hope. Two kilometers deep beneath the sea, an escape passage had unexpectedly opened. It was most likely caused by the violent movements of the platform, although it couldn't be ruled out that surviving workers were responsible. When Lucy inquired about it, the executives unanimously believed it was unlikely to be human-induced. After all, such a massive explosion had occurred on the drilling platform, and it was impossible for anyone to survive. But upon seeing this glimmer of hope, Lucy, despite the executive's objections, insisted on going to the drilling platform to investigate. Just as she, on her own, put on a life jacket and prepared to embark, her teammate Jack decided to help her. More hands meant more strength. After successfully delivering the two of them to the offshore drilling platform, the aircraft left the sea surface without looking back. From then on, it was up to Lucy and Jack to search for Chris. Lucy controlled the underwater detector, and began searching for clues at the pipeline on the seabed. Upon detecting a heat signature on the screen, hope lit up on Lucy's face. It was highly likely to be her husband, Chris. So the two of them hurriedly made their way toward the depths of the pipeline. As they carried out the rescue, the company headquarters received an urgent notification. Their drilling platform had leaked a large amount of oil after the explosion, spreading over an area of 100,000 square kilometers. And it was rapidly expanding at a high speed. If it wasn't stopped, the entire ocean would face tremendous pollution, and all living creatures would suffer. After contemplating for a moment, the company executives decided to use explosives to ignite the oil on the sea surface. The concentration was already sufficient for combustion, if they allowed it to continue spreading. By the time they wanted to ignite it after dilution by seawater, it would be too late. Just as the two fighter jets were ordered by the executives, to proceed to the designated airspace for bomb deployment. Lucy and Jack who were on the drilling platform, were completely unaware of the situation. They were in the pipeline, rescuing Chris. After safely escorting Chris outside, their teammate Jack sensed something was wrong. He noticed that the sea surface was covered with a thick layer of oil, a bad sign. Meanwhile, the fighter jets were getting closer to the designated area for dropping the bombs. Just as they were preparing to drop the bombs, headquarters unexpectedly received a phone call from survivor Chris. Hey, it's Chris, can you send a helicopter to rescue us? Chris hoped that headquarters would dispatch a helicopter to bring them back. However, the response he received was a message to fend for themselves. After careful consideration, headquarters ultimately chose to ignite the oil to save more people. They promptly hung up the phone. With the roar of the aircraft, two bombs exploded nearby, igniting a raging fire on the sea surface. Sensing the danger, Lucy and her group hurriedly ran towards the end of the drilling platform. They had to place their hopes on the two life capsules right in front of them. By filling them with half sea water, the capsules would be submerged below the sea surface, protecting them from the flames. As the flames grew closer, the three of them hurriedly poured water into the capsules. When they deemed it sufficient, Lucy entered one of the capsules, closed the door, and fastened her seatbelt. Lucy pressed the start button, but no matter how she struggled, the life capsule remained unresponsive. As the flames approached closer and closer, Jack made his way outside and opened the gate on the track. He chose to sacrifice himself to save Lucy. Amidst a deafening explosion, Jack turned into ashes. In the end, Lucy and her husband Chris survived.
The film is based on a true event and can be considered an excellent disaster movie.